a good chance to see here how two tires do work. Casey Kane gets a terrible start there. And Kurt Busch trying to move to the inside and take that spot away and take the lead away from Newman, but Newman will have nothing of it. No, oh, got trouble getting into three, guys. Joey Logano. Big crash. Oh, he's all oh, tied no. down. Over and over, Logano goes between three and four. Oh, no. The car will come back to rest on all four tires. Heavy, heavy crash here on lap 32. See Robbie Gordon, Martin Truex, Reed Sorensen involved in this. I looked up, saw the 20 car on the apron getting into the corner. See the crew here, they're trying to see the replay. Now the window net is down. That's the drivers are told in the driver's meeting that if you are awake and alert, put that window net down so we know, the safety crews will know. There's the window net down on Robbie Gordon's car. This is the moment we talked about in the pre-race show, guys, uh, that this stuff could happen in a hurry here, even at Dover. And especially after on a restart when all the cars are, are bunched together. It's good to see here that uh, the window net came down on that 20 car. We're a little obscured from how that car got so low on the back straightaway. And I saw it just could barely see the roof of the car. Yeah, I looked up and he was way down on the apron, uh, actually entering the corner, way before the entry. There's a great sign right there. Joey Logano coming out of the car. That's a scary looking crash right there. Young man had had so much success at this racetrack, really got his name out there when he won a Camping World East race here for NASCAR, won a championship here, made his first nationwide start earlier in the year, becoming the youngest winner in NASCAR Sprint Cup history. There's Robbie Gordon out of his car. We'll get a record to take it back to the garage area. And the cars have been stopped on the back straightaway because of the amount of debris. They would, didn't want them running through this. The heavy damage on Martin Truex's car. Let's show you how this all unfolded here on the restart, going down the back straightaway. Really just kind of a stack up effect. Like was one of them got on the brakes and kind of forced yeah, look at Tony Stewart just missing this crash. Man, here's where it really gets gets exciting. Man, we talked about that there's nowhere to go as you come off of these corners, and when something like this happens, you, you really have, you make a commitment, and you've got one opportunity really to miss this wreck. Tony Stewart did a great job. Some others got caught up in. Let's drive along with Tony Stewart here. See it develop right in front of him. He actually got into the back of the 20 as he checked up. And you know it's going to be bad right here when he comes up in front of traffic. Reed Sorensen makes the impact. Scott Speed got a piece of it also. The car is actually going backwards when it starts to lift up and go over and begin to tumble. Yeah, it's just being pushed, and, and as he kind of dug in a little bit and, and it was uh, continued to get pushed there, that's what got it up and rolling. And you hear what you were talking about how high the banks are here, and you see he's just tumbling down that bank. There's so much height difference right there from the top of the bank down to the apron. Three stories, the difference between the top and the bottom, 24 degree banks. Just side over side over side, a violent impact. And the good news that uh, this new car that NASCAR brought on, what, three years ago, and the driver able to walk away uh, and walk into the ambulance. A violent crash here on lap 31, taking out four cars at Dover, Delaware. The Monster Mile can be very cruel and it has certainly already bitten four drivers here as they were working lap 32. We are under a red flag and there is one of the heavily damaged cars of Joey Logano. Let's show you what happened. They were working lap 32 coming up the back stretch. Now middle of the back straightaway. Look at Tony Stewart right behind the 20 car. Yeah, you can see Bobby Labonte pulled down to get to the inside. Joe Logano had to check up a little bit. Tony Stewart got into the back of him with his wheels turned left, moving down the track. That sent him down on the apron and then back up in front of the rest of these cars. This is a, an accident that is, you hear it said before, heard it said before, 
racing accidents, that's exactly what this is. There's nowhere to place blame. Everybody's just going kind of for the same spot. And when things check up and happen very quick, you have to understand they're going 170 miles an hour right here. And you can see right there just how quick that happened. Now watch Bobby Lavani move down right in front of the 20. Yeah, you can see Logano got it just into the back of the 96 there, just for a split second, but he had to check up not to hit the 96 any harder. And when he did, Tony wasn't able to check up quite as quickly. Well, let's listen uh, to Bobby Labonte's radio. Point low to protect the inside. As you said, it was clear, so I went down a little bit. If he hit me. Boom. And then next thing I know, he spun out. Yeah, you still were clear, and uh, he, hit, he, he hit you after that. Uh, after he got hit. That pretty well explains it. I, I mean, Bobby really didn't do anything wrong. He's just trying to, like I said, protect his position, getting in the corner so that he didn't get freight trained and yeah. a line of cars go by him on the inside. There is Tom Logano, the father of Joey, and uh, he obviously running down to check on his son at the care center. And the good news is, is that Joey Logano did get out of this car and walk on his own to the ambulance to be taken into the care center. Now, let's talk about safety for a moment and we'll show you why these drivers were able to walk away as we go down to our Craftsman Tech Garage and Tim Brewer. Thanks, Jerry. You know, the cars are a lot safer, but this equipment inside the cars, take for instance, the Hans device. It's actually the head and neck support system. It keeps the head from coming forward, but still yet inside the car, the guys work very hard to make sure that when a driver's in place, the helmet's sitting in between these two support systems on the side. What that does, it keeps the head from flopping around. And as long as you stay in the environment of this seat, your chances of walking away are very good. Tim, that's a great explanation. And DJ, when they first came out with this, uh, drivers were complaining that it would took away their visibility and took away their ability to turn their helmet. But now you're able to see that uh, the safety does play a major role. Yeah, it really does. It's amazing how far this has come. You see Jeff Gordon, Hendrick Motorsports uh, requires all of their drivers to run this seat. And uh, it is great innovation. All of this safety stuff inside the cars is, it has been fantastic. So that's why these guys can, can do this. And I think Jamie's uh, with one of the drivers that was involved in this accident. Well, Robbie Gordon has been released. He says he's just fine. But Robbie, you were just right there wrong place at the right time. What did you see? Well, um, all, all I remember seeing was, uh, how do I say it? Tony, or I saw um, the, the 20 car down on the bottom and he just shot across the track. Uh, looks like he, he must have got pushed to the bottom or something happened going into three. And um, I went to the high, tri high side trying to slow down. And unfortunately, uh, we got caught up in it. But, you know, for our car, um, for the Camp World car, it wasn't, wasn't nothing but a radiator. Uh, but it's, you know, normal practice. Go to the emergency, go to the care center and check it out. I'm glad that um, the Joey's good. Um, I mean, I remember being stopped there and looking at that thing, flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping. And um, I was excited to see him climb out of that thing. I'm glad you're okay as well. And we'll uh, catch up with Joey Logano as soon as he's released, Doc. Drivers are all okay. That's the good news. But it is a very violent sport. Almost 180 miles an hour as they enter turn three over there. And look at Logano's car, side over side over side. And what was a Toyota Camry is now a large heap of junk being taken to the garage area.